Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <sighs> Chapter 3 of Mark. Then Jesus left them and went into again into the synagogue. <laughs> the synagogue. <laughs> Where he encountered a man who had an atrophied, paralyzed hand. Guarantee you go into nearly any synagogue, church, we call them, you're going to find people who are paralyzed. May not be in the hands, but they'll be paralyzed. And how do I go deeper in God? Because they go there looking for God instead of going into the secret place and the intimacy chambers of their own hearts where they invited God into. Whoa! Jack <laughs> and find <fried> God. <laughs> Pouring under their innermost being. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got a smack with a cherubim wing. Oh. It felt so good. So don't look at the building. Look at the builder who's building his church of living stones. Hallelujah. Everyone was watching Jesus. <laughs> That's a good scripture right there. That's all we need for this episode. <laughs> Everyone was watching Jesus. The difference is, are you watching Jesus with the motivation of humility to learn? Or with the arrogant, prideful spirit to accuse? Nevertheless, as we read here today that everyone was watching Jesus. What spirit are we of? <clears throat> Closely to see if he would heal the man on the Sabbath. Giving them a reason to accuse him of breaking the Sabbath rules. <laughs> the religious spirit loves to accuse. That's the food of a religious spirit. Accusations. You know that Satan is called the accuser? And he feeds his disciples pride as they accuse. That's their food. God's disciples feast on the humility of the lamb. That's meat for their spirit man to help them grow into the one new man. The divine nature of Jesus Christ in them. Hallelujah. Humility. You, get, you, you gotta grow in humility <laughs> by going low, down, and serving your spirit with your spirit. Remember Paul said that Jesus Christ who I'm served with my spirit. He yielded his body to him, but he served him with his spirit. So if you want to be the servant of all, you serve with your spirit. And God sometimes might even require you to use your body to open it and spit some words out or something. <laughs> or maybe just groan a little bit with words that cannot be uttered, you know? Some groanings. Ugh. Man, I'm so tanked, I don't even... Let's keep going. Here, everyone was watching Jesus. Woo! Jesus said to them, hold on, go back. He would heal them on the Sabbath, giving them a reason to accuse him, breaking the Sabbath rules. Jesus said to the man with the paralyzed hand, stand here in the middle of the room. <laughs> 
And then he turned to all those gathered there and said, Which is it? I'm so whacked. <laughs> when Jesus talks, there's so much life. Which is it? Is it against the law to do evil on the Sabbath or to do good? To destroy a life or to save one? But no one answered him a word. I hope you guys can feel this more than hearing it. <laughs> it's like caramel juices squirting everywhere. <laughs> oh my godness. Thank you, Shata. No one answered him a word. Then looking around at everyone, Jesus was moved with indignation and grieved by the hardness of their hearts. Don't grieve God. Let's keep our hearts soft and tender towards the anointing. And said to the man, now stretch out your hand. As he stretched out his hand, it was completely healed. I need an atmosphere before I can walk in healing. There's too much unbelief here. You know, Jesus, could, in a state of being grieved, in a state of, in the atmosphere of unbelief, he still was moved with compassion to love and to heal that man. It is the will of God for him to be healed. Many of us are that paralyzed man. We just can't go forward anymore. It is the will of God for us to stretch forth in obedience to his word and be healed. To do things that we cannot do in our own strength, but by the strength of his word. After this happened, the Pharisees left abruptly and began to plot together with the friends and supporters of Herod Antipas Antipas on how they would kill Jesus. There's another fruit of the religious spirit. Debates, criticisms, accusations, murder, even if it's just using their words or physically like we've seen in the religious church in the 1500s who would murder people, anybody who would begin to walk in the spirit. Oh, there's an anointing on your wife, on your life? I mean, you must be a witch. Let's burn them at the stake. What do you mean? You're not going to follow our rules. Grab, our, grab your rosary and pray. What do you mean? Don't make repetitious prayers. Burn him. He's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna use our beads, <laughs> our traditions of men. He's, a, he's gotta be a witch. Ugh, he thinks that he has a relationship with God without even praying with our beads, <laughs> our necklace, <laughs> our noose. That's what a necklace thing is. Nicholas, yeah, necklace. That's what they did to those people who broke the chains and shackles of religion called the rosary off of them. They didn't want to pray to Mary anymore. They wanted to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. They didn't want to make repetitious prayers anymore like religion taught them. They wanted to pray the way Jesus taught them. When you pray, say, Our Father, it's hard in heaven. Holy is your name. God, let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth. The same way that it's done in heaven in that realm, you know. <laughs> Give us the daily bread of your presence, God. And I choose to forgive every, everyone who sinned against me because you've forgiven me. And thank you for leading me out of temptation, God. And delivering me from evil. Because yours is all the power, the glory, and the kingdom. Forever. Forever and ever. I set my affection on you and I remove it from all religious spirits. 
and whatever man can do. I have my gaze locked on the author and finisher of my faith, not those who teach religious unbelief. Fight the things of the Spirit. Hey, man, Chris. <laughs> Write that on the notepad. <laughs> we'll, we'll make a Twitter post about it later. <laughs> Maybe we'll get some likes by men. <laughs> you get noticed by men. <laughs> Instead of our Father in Heaven. <laughs> After this. <laughs> Woo! Uh, how they're going to kill Jesus. Okay. Once again, Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lakeside. But a massive crowd of people followed him from all around the provinces of Galilee and southern Israel. Vast crowds came from Jerusalem, Adumia, Adumia Jordan, beyond the Jordan. And Lebanon. <laughs> Large numbers of people swarmed in from everywhere when they heard him of him and his wonderful works. Shaka. Oh, we can swarm to Jesus right now. If you've heard about him and his wonderful works. The kingdom of God is at hand. How far is it? Well, how far is your hand? <laughs> oh, close enough to touch. The crowd pressed so closely to Jesus that he instructed his disciples to bring him a small boat to get into the get in and keep from being crushed. Oh, I gotta let that fire burn up everything, Lord. I just feel my hand is on fire again. Whoa, it feels good. Let that increase, Lord. <laughs> With the coals. I'm copying you. From the, your copy? Yeah, just fire. Say, fire of God in Jesus' name. Uh, I'm so tanked right now. Where are we? Oh, the crowd pressed. So closely to Jesus that he instructed his subscriber to, to bring him a small boat to get into the ship from being crushed by the crowd. For he had healed so many that the sick kept pushing forward just so that they could touch Jesus. Are you sick and tired of the demon? We need to be like these guys. They were sick and tired and they pressed in to touch Jesus. Ever get sick and tired of the demon? Just press in and touch Jesus. Oh. Oh, it's like a hug from heaven right there, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh. I might just have to lay down for a bit. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Heal. For he healed so many that the sick were pushing forward so they could touch Jesus. And uh, whenever a demon saw him, it would throw a person down at Jesus' feet screaming out, you are the son of God. <laughs> it's really hard to like be animated and make them scream out. <laughs> oh my gosh. You are the son of God. <laughs> but Jesus would silence the demons and sternly order, order them not to reveal who he was. Why? Because that's our job. 
Religious demons have been trying to reveal who Jesus was for years. It doesn't work that way. The only way to reveal who Jesus is, is a fully yielded lover. Because God is love. And then the love of God will pour through that person. And the Holy Spirit will reveal to whoever he's being poured out to that person that that's what God's like. God's not a religious spirit. God is spirit and life and love and peace and joy and oh, all the good yummy stuff that every human craves but doesn't know where to find it. It's all found in one man, Jesus Christ. And how do you receive it? By surrendering. Not just a one-time surrender. You gotta wake up. Surrender. Anything that's blocking you from surrendering fully to your intimacy with your lover, Jesus Christ, that is an idol that needs to die. Surrender it. How hard is that? God, I give you this. And then, if it's destructive, there's no oil on it, just get rid of it. Who cares? I would, I would much rather get rid of something that is bringing torment in my life, that's blocking me from the peace and prosperity and glory, love, walk with God, any day. <laughs> the wine always tells the truth. Even at the... <sighs> Even in the face of angry religious spirits who just want to murder you. Still tells the truth by the spirit. Where are we? Okay. And whenever demons saw it, throw it out. Okay, scream it out. Your son of God. But Jesus would silence the demons and sternly order them not to reveal who he was. That's your job. That's my job. The greatest revealers are the ones who have surrendered everything to the Holy Ghost. He's the one who reveals Jesus. Afterward, Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to himself. Man, I'm getting so blasted off of those words. They're like alive with like honey and caramel. Man, his word is so good. Afterward, Jesus went up, went up, 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 up. You want to go meet with Jesus? Go up, 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 up onto a mountainside and call to himself the men he wanted to be his close companions. Whoa, shot it up as she got it. <laughs> so they went up the mountainside to join him. How about to be joined to him? <laughs> one spirit, one mind, one accord. Whoa. <laughs> you want to be joined to Jesus? Go up into the mountain of the Lord, Mount Zion. <laughs> He's waiting there for you in your spirit, man. Kingdom of God's within you. And within the kingdom of God, there's a mountain there. There's a tree of life there, too. Take a sip of that caramel cup. Oh, ho, ho, ho. No. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm so tanked right now. Where are we? What number are we on? What number verse? <laughs> he. Oh, we're getting into numbers here. Okay. To join them, to join him on the mountains. Okay. He appointed the twelve, whom he named apostles. He wanted them to be continually at his side as his friends. That's the will of God. And so that he could send them out to preach and have authority to heal the sick and cast out demons. That authority comes through friendship. He appointed his 12 and gave Simon the nickname Peter, The Rock. What an honor to be called The Rock. You know, 
to know the rock of rocks, you know? <laughs> he gave, and he gave the brothers, Jacob and John, the sons of Z ZBD, the na nickname Benarega, which means passionate sons. <laughs> One of the most worst things you could ever lose is your passion. We need to read the passion translation almost to like maintain. To <laughs> it's like. One time I was so sad, I, I lost all my passion. It was like the worst horrible thing. That's what the enemy takes from you is your passion. When you get depressed, but you overcome that through the blood of the Lamb by the word of his testimony in your life. Speak the word, you can crush all those devils down easily. Speak in the word, just disagree with the words of darkness and agree with the words of light. And they just fall underneath your feet where they, where they belong. Trample on serpents and scorpions is walking in the word of God. And uh, he snuffed all of my passion out of me. I had no passion. And I found that the more time I would spend with Jesus, the more I realized he is the most passionate person you'll ever meet. The Holy Ghost is so passionate. The Father just, just passion. His heart just longs and burns for us to receive his love. Jesus is so passionate, he'll, he'll get nailed to a cross in the shape of a hug, just waiting for someone to come and embrace him so he can embrace them in another dimension. Step through the him and he's there hugging you. The Holy Spirit will lead you into all of him. If you're willing to follow the Holy Spirit in humility, one time Jesus preached the word in for 10 minutes and he used my voice while I fell into a trance. And in the trance I saw a vision and I saw Jesus preaching. He was so passionate. It was like those Pentecostal dudes on television. In the beginning God created in. I was there and I created and you know, It's not that, you know, I, see, I, see, blah, blah, I can't even do it now. I can't even fake it till I make it. It was so passionate, like tears, like, man, I wish I could preach like that. <laughs> it, was, it was using my, my face and my voice, but I know it was his spirit. It was Jesus teaching me about in, about being in the secret place of the Most High, abiding there so that none of those darkness things can touch you. And in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, he created everything. It's not like, like he, you know, in the beginning, God created, he created everything and then stepped into the in the beginning, you know. It's hard, I can't even explain it in English anymore. Whatever. Re, riga, which means passionate sons. I'm not even going to try. I'm just, if you lost your passion, look at Jesus. He's the most passionate person you'll ever meet in all existence. You don't believe me? Look at him. With your pure in heart. The others were Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, Jacob, the sons of Alpha, Eus, Thadda, Eus, the Simon, the National, <laughs> the Nation, Alice. <laughs> oh, my brain is broken. And Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. I don't know if I should finish this video. <laughs> Let's just read it. Let's just, <laughs> uh, then Jesus went home. <laughs> That's what it says. Then Jesus went home. But once again, a large crowd gathered around him which prevented him from even eating a meal. Bad. I'm not bad. When his own family heard that he was there, they went out to seize him. <laughs> they said, 
He's insane. Always those with mental illness will project what's on them to what the anointing is. They'll call the anointing insane, but it's really religious madness. <laughs> you're full of pride! Actually, no, I think that's what you're manifesting right now. How <laughs> am judging me like that? <laughs> oh. Religious spirits will always manifest what's in them when they step into the light of the glory that you're radiating. They'll accuse you of what's in them. <sighs> He's insane. <laughs> the religious scholars. Oh, this, this book is so good. <laughs> the religious scholars. Scholars. The school ours who arrived from Jerusalem were saying, Satan has possessed him. But they're the ones who are Satan possessed. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Satan has possessed him. He casts out demons by the authority of the Prince of Demons. Jesus called them to himself and spoke to them using parables. Why? Because only those with humility can basically, with who have the true spirit of the fear of the Lord, can begin to walk in wisdom. And wisdom can interpret parables, not human understanding. Wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and revelation go together. Revelation reveals the parables, but you need wisdom and revelation to even begin to walk in this. But you need the fear of the Lord, which is pure. And you need a pure life to even have that. Hallelujah. Oh my gosh, okay. Where am I? How oh, Jesus called them to himself and spoke to them using parables. Okay, I'm gonna do my best just to get through this. We're running out of time. How Satan, how can Satan cast out Satan? No kingdom can endure if it is divided against itself. And a splintered house will not be able to stand for it is divided. And if Satan fights against himself, he will not endure. And his end has come. Jesus said to them, Listen, no one is able to break into a mighty man's house and steal his property unless the first overpowers the mighty man and ties him up. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. Invite him into the temple of the Holy Ghost. This temple you are, and he will bind all the demons. And then your job is to disagree with all that the demons have taught you and cast those thoughts down. And then you begin obeying only the thoughts of the anointing to walk in his ways, his mind. And that's when you begin walking as an overcomer. You overcome by the word of his testimony, by the precious blood of Jesus who got you there, and by the word of God. The word, oh, I can't even shut up. I don't know if I'll be able to make a fourth video today. Maybe I'll just make another video of groaning. <laughs> a groaning video. <laughs> uh, that's what I feel like doing now. Alright. And if Satan fights against himself, he will not endure. And his end has come. Jesus said to them, Listen, no one is able to break into a mighty man's house and steal his property unless the first overpowers the mighty man and ties him up. Then his entire house can be plundered and his possessions taken. I tell you this tr timeless truth. All sin will be forgiven, even all the blasphemies they speak. But there can never be forgiveness for the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't say tongues is of the devil when someone's praying in tongues. It's not worth it. Religious pride is not worth it. Losing your salvation, even if you're once saved, always saved. Let's read what Jesus says. 
all sin will be forgiven. Even all the blasphemies, all sin. But there can never be forgiveness for the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit. Wake up. For he is guilty of an eternal sin. This is because they said he was empowered by a demon spirit. So it's the same thing. If someone says you're empowered by a demon spirit, who are they blaspheming? When it's really the Holy Spirit working through you. Fear the Lord. May the spirit of the fear of the Lord strike everybody, including myself. And then let it increase tenfold. <laughs> Everyone, ah, oh, shut off the video, shut it off! <laughs> you think the fear of the Lord's a bad thing? It's one of the seven spirits of who? Seven spirits of, I want all of you, God, except for that part. I'll do anything, God, except for I don't want to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to reign with you. Well, no suffering, no reigning. You want to reign the anointing on people? They're going to bite and snap at you. <laughs> You're going to accuse you of what's in them. You got to remain humble. What is it to remain humble? You gotta stay really high, in the most high, so that you don't fall down under the opinions of men. Fully dependent upon the Holy Spirit, not dependent upon the opinions of men apart from the Spirit, even if they say they're Christian. If there's no Christ in their inn, then what makes them Christian? I'm not Christian. Not Christian, you're a Christian. Christ like one. Full of Christ's spirit. That's what, make, that's what makes you a Christian, not full of opinions. This is because they said he's empowered by a demon spirit. Okay, then Jesus' mother and his brothers came and stood outside and sent a message to him asking that he come out and speak with them. When the crowd sitting around Jesus heard this, they spoke up and said to him, Jesus, your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. We got to finish. Yeah. <laughs> he answered them saying, Who is my true mother and my true brothers? Those who said a sinner's prayer. <laughs> but still live for themselves? Good question, Jesus. Let's find out. He answered them saying, Who is my true mother and my true brothers? Who's my family? Then looking into the eyes of those who were sitting in a circle around him, he said, Here are my true family members. For whoever does the will of God is my brother, my sister, and my mother. Whoever does the will of my father... Whoever does the will of the Holy Spirit, whoever does the will of God. How do you know the will of God? Not my will, God, but yours. Would that be done? 